So this past weekend was the Gypsy Jazz full immersion weekend with myself and Benji Winterstein. This is an intense weekend workshop where we cover all things Gypsy Jazz guitar from the fundamentals and the basics all the way to arrangement and live organized and spontaneous performance. I'm Darren Napoli and as you might know I've been running camps and various kinds of workshops for over 10 years now and wanted to share with you some of the impressions from this very last camp. Make sure to stick around until the very end. I will share with you my three main takeaways from this workshop, things that might be holding back your progress as a musician, things that you might or might not be aware of that I think are fundamental to remind and that will help you be on the path of improvement. But first, sit back and enjoy. <laughs> enjoyed that brief video summary of our first Gypsy Jazz full immersion weekend with Benji Winterstein and myself. As promised after observing my students for each day of the camp, these are my three takeaways. Three things that could be slowing down your progress as a musician if you're not aware of or if you're aware of but you're just not careful about them. So here they are. Number one, never shy away from a jam session if you can. Of course there are going to be times where you just don't feel like playing 
Of course, there's going to be times where you just would rather sit back and just listen. And there's no problem with that. But I want you to be aware and fully conscious of the fact that every time you pass up the opportunity to jam with other people, you're essentially choosing to postpone your progress. You are choosing to delay your improvement. So while there's nothing wrong with that, it's good to be aware of that. Because you see, either way, you will have to still go through jam sessions at some point where you might be uncomfortable, where you might not know the tunes, where you might feel like the level of the other musicians is higher than yours, where you might feel like your skills are just not up to par just yet. So even if you don't feel like playing that jam session, those same feelings will reappear at your next jam session and your skill level will have been the same. So grabbing your fears and looking them in the face and fighting through them, playing each and every jam session you can, will speed up the process of your improvement. While sitting on the sidelines, which can be useful and can be appropriate at times, but it will be a passed up opportunity for growth and improvement. At this very last camp, for example, that first night, some of my students were a little tired and they preferred to just sit back and listen. And again, that was totally fine and appropriate. But it was a perfect situation for them instead to fight their fears, fight their fatigue even, jump in and play and still therefore develop all those skills that might not yet be so refined yet. Skills such as learning tunes on the spot, hearing chord progressions and harmonic progressions that they might not have heard before and finding ways to learn them as quickly as possible. It also means relating to other players and learning to react to cues and inputs from other musicians. It means improvising on songs they've never heard before and the list goes on and on. See, I know a lot of you are accustomed to playing in your living rooms and in your bedrooms and of course there's nothing wrong with that, but when that is the vast majority of the time spent in your musical life and with your instrument, there's a tendency to lose touch or to not develop those other so vital skills, which are the interaction with the other musicians, the ability to have the reflexes to react to cues and to inputs, the ability to listen while playing and vice versa. Some of those things you can only train and practice while playing with other people and other musicians. So if that's not your day-to-day -day experience, any chance and any opportunity you get to jam and play with other people and develop those skills that cannot be fully developed and practiced at home, those should be taken advantage of. And like I said before, there's nothing wrong at times to just know that you don't feel like playing and accept it and enjoy the jam as a listener. But if you're truly, truly committed to your improvement, any chance that you might get to play with others and develop those skills is crucial to take advantage of and put your current abilities to the test and force yourself to not look at your instrument but look at the other musicians. Listen with your ears and watch with your eyes where the music is going, what chords are being played, what harmonies are being played. Learning to use your ear in your phrasing and improve your improvisational skills regardless of what chords are being played or what the tune is. So of course, in any workshop, I will never force anyone to play, but I will always remind them, you're postponing your improvement when you choose to opt out. You are delaying a process that you're going to have to go through and experience in any case for you to grow anyway. So sometimes it's a matter of really finding that energy, finding that determination, finding that motivation, fighting through maybe some fears or some resistance and jumping into a jam and, and accepting the challenge. Point number two, always try to learn the new tunes on the spot. The best thing you can do in a jam session always is to try to figure out tunes on the spot. Obviously the ones you don't know. You must remember your two main senses your eyes and your ears are always at your service. You can watch other musicians and try to gather where the song is going or what the chords are or what the harmonic progression is, or and or you can use your ears and pay attention to the bass lines and from there figure out what the chords could be and 
or the structure of the tune, whether it's a A, A, B, A, or A, B, etc. And the thing is, it's not only so much about learning that specific tune on the spot, it's about developing those musical skills that once you acquire, you will never lose in terms of ear and recognition and memory. You see, bass lines are like melodies in and of themselves. Each tune has chords that have a lowest note. And when you can identify that bass line, you're very close to being able to identify the chord. Chords, as I've mentioned in this video before, which I highly recommend you watch again, if you haven't already, come essentially in three families, major, minor, and dominant, essentially. So you can always boil down the chord or the function of that chord in one of those three families. So once you identify the bass line, the next assumption you have to make or the next determination you must make is, is it a major chord, a minor chord, or a dominant chord? And then from there you establish its function. Is it a two of a five that leads to a one, etc. So learn to develop and to trust those senses, your eyes and your ears. And since a structure or a tune is repeated over and over and you always have another chance. So even if you don't get it right away, no need to get discouraged. That tune will keep going for a while, especially if there's a few people in the jam. So you might try to determine a section or a part of the tune in the first choruses and then slowly gather the rest. And even if you don't get the whole tune, but just some sections of it, you will have done yourself a huge favor in going through this process and you will have improved as a musician overall. Because you see these skills, once you acquire them, you'll never lose them. And they will help you tremendously anytime you go and solo for a tune or anytime you perform, your musical muscle will be that much more developed. So really try to resist that temptation to sit back and sit out just because you don't know the tune. Fight that fear or that resistance and just open your eyes, open your ears and just do your best. Sing along with the bass line, try to figure out what the chord is and try to play along. I mean, really, what's the worst that can happen? You don't get the tune anyway. Well, so what? Just trying is going to be huge anyway. So just like a child who jumps in the water when they don't fully know how to swim yet, that's going to happen anyway. If you're going to want to learn how to swim, at some point you're going to have to go through that fear, go through that discomfort, go through that slight inability. And anyone who learns how to swim at one point or another has to cross that path. So take advantage of all the jams and work your way through that process. I promise you will thank me or yourself especially later. Last but not least, number three. Learn to distinguish between your studying channel and your playing improvising channel. With my students, I like to refer this as channel A and channel B. Let's just call channel A your studying channel. That's the channel where maybe you transcribe the phrase and you want to learn it, so you repeat it. That's the channel where you play with the goal of learning or absorbing something new. That's the channel where you're not satisfied until that certain phrase or technique or lick comes out as well as you imagine it and as well as you desire. Channel B, on the other hand, is your improvisational creative channel which is the channel that you will be in anytime you play with other people or in a performance setting or where you just simply improvise. Now, of course, there's overlap between the two channels because one serves to support the other. Anytime you study and you work in channel A, it's so that when you are in channel B, you can express yourself and produce the best music you can. So yes, there is a bridge between those two channels. But what I notice so much is my students or people that are playing and improvising, but it's just as if they're still really studying. So they might be playing a certain tune and they get to that certain chord or that certain area of the tune and they wanna, they wanna play that phrase or they wanna play that lick no matter what. And this is setting yourself up for so much frustration. So, I highly recommend truly not doing that. Recognize when you're studying and you're developing the skills of that channel A, studying, 
So discipline, repetition, attention to detail. On the other hand, when you're playing, allow for the music and the ideas to come spontaneously. And more importantly, on channel B, when you're playing and improvising, you want to be an active player as much as an active listener. In other words, what you play should be directly influenced by what is happening around you, by the unique circumstances that you're finding yourself with, should be influenced by the other musicians and what they are doing in that unique, unrepeatable moment. And then once again, students of mine or players that are mostly used to playing in their bedroom and in their living rooms end up playing sort of like with a helmet on where they're only active and doing and not accustomed to listening and to being open to what is happening around them. Experienced musicians, whether they know it or not, are able to produce their music, but in response to inputs from other musicians, from the crowd, from even just the room they're in and how that room sounds. That might determine how and what they play. So in my experience, it's tremendously useful to make a distinction between those two channels, recognize which one you're in, and accept it when there's a bridge and all of a sudden those two channels are connecting. So if you're playing a tune and you want to play that certain phrase in a certain chord and it naturally comes to you, great. But don't force yourself into playing certain things in a predetermined fashion just because you studied it and now you want to prove to yourself that you learned it at the expense of maybe the communication with the other musicians, the communication with the crowd, the response to outside inputs. If you're studying, study, be disciplined, be rigorous. When you're playing, let the music come, open your ears once again, your eyes and play in response to the inputs that are around you. And you will have so much more fun. You will have relieved yourself from the pressure of having learned or not something. Overall, it will be a much more enjoyable experience. And you'll be surprised how a lot of the things will come out if you just let them naturally. Just like Charlie Parker once said, he, I practice 11 hours a day. But when I go play, I forget about it all and just play. One last bonus point I want to make is keep in touch with your community. Once you go to one of these camps, like the ones I organize, make sure you keep in touch and you try to stay in touch with the musicians you meet. Because again, the worst thing you can do is relegate yourself singularly to your bedroom or to your living room and never play with other people. In fact, I would go as far as to say, if you're not playing regularly with other people, make that effort, go to the next jam session, meet people because your highest level of musicianship will happen when you combine your homework and your practice at home with interaction with other musicians. Try to always find musicians in your area that you can get together with, even if just once a month that you can prepare some tunes with, that you can exchange ideas and knowledge about tunes and create small sets, create some arrangements and just play together. Put your skills that you work on at home to the test. And I assure you that music will be a lot more fun once you can find even just a handful of people to share the music with. I truly hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed the impressions from this week's camp I had with Benji Winterstein. We had an absolute blast. It was great. I want to thank Agriturismo y Leprotti, where we held it. Mademoiselle Café, who treated us to some great food. Feel free to reach out in the comments if you would like to be notified about our future camps. In June, I always hold my Under the Tuscan Sun camp. This year will be year 10. So I'm so excited for that. But we will have several weekend camps coming up in the next few months. So let me know, of course, in the comments if you're interested. Don't hesitate, of course, if there are questions also, leave them also in the comments. And don't forget, as always, in the description, you'll find links to useful tools such as my latest ebook, Gypsy Jazz Guitar Mastery, the link to my free Zooms on Tuesdays, as well as the link to my free transcriptions. Thanks for watching this video if you've watched it so far. 
Don't forget to, of course, put your like, subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. I will see you in the next video. Déjà ça change parce que tu as ça, après tu as ça, ça et après tu as ça. Ça c'est bon de ajouter. Exactement, exactement. Et tu veux dire tout ça. L'harmonie c'est comme un, un canevas. Un... Oui, 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 oui. Tu marches sur ça.